Well, today's Colorado trivia is true or false. The Colorado Historic Newspapers Collection currently includes more than 600,000 digitized pages. The answer is so very true. Uh, CHNC even includes over 160 individual titles published in our state from 1859 to 1923. Coloradans have read more than 3,000 different newspapers since the first. The Rocky Mountain News appeared April 23, 1859. Nearly all of those newspapers, including the news, are now gone. In an effort to bring back some of those memories and of the newspapers, Dr. Colorado is here, and co-authors have just published a 432-page book, Colorado Newspapers, A History and Inventory, 1859 to 2000, and it lists all newspapers by county and town. It's so nice to see you. Wonderful to be here. Why did every small town, every town, had to have at least one newspaper? Yeah, and they did indeed. And I love the names, the Brighton Blade, the Como Headlight, yeah. the Rifle a Sharpshooter. <laughs> Pretty cool, well, right? This is one for Brighton, Colorado. And they were puffing the town, building up that town as the place to live, as the Garden of Eden, the Promised Land. 3,000 newspapers. How did every small town support that amount of newspaper? You know, supposedly a British visitor said, how can a little town like this support two newspapers? Yeah. The answer was, it takes two newspapers to keep the town alive because the newspaper would puff the town, promote it, bring people in, promise that this was going to be the county seat or the territorial capital. Isn't that interesting? And Billy Byers, he was the founding editor of Colorado's first newspaper. Tell me more about him. Well, he's a fascinating guy, our greatest promoter by far. In the news, he even promotes steamboat travel up to Denver and claims that we had steamboat departures from here for Omaha, St. Louis, oh uh, New Orleans. And you know what's interesting? He actually built his newspaper office in the bed of Cherry Creek. Why did he do decided to do right. it there. He was trying to reconcile the rival towns. Denver on this side of the creek, Araria on that side, were competing. And he puts it in the middle and promotes both and doesn't say Denver, Araria on the masthead, but says the Rocky Mountains. Well, we've all heard of Bonfies Blood Center and Fred Bonfies was the co-founder of the Denver Post. I had no idea about that. Right. He was the most famous and richest and most successful of all our newspapermen. Here he is, a, this young man, a con artist, come in from Kansas City no. where they chased him out of town. Really? Yeah. Wow, isn't that interesting? He was very successful. What, uh, con artist, what do you mean by that? Like what? He was involved with fake lottery schemes, a kind of shady past. Isn't that interesting? Which helped him in the newspaper business. And now his name is doing so good for so many others, isn't right. that? His daughters who set up the uh, Bonfils Blood Center tried to make up for his sins. Oh, well. With all their good work. Good for the daughter. And then the co-founder was named Harry Tammon, is that right? Yeah, Harry Tammon, you see him here when he was young. He was a bartender at the uh, Windsor Hotel Bar. And his, uh, what he said is every silver dollar he took in, he flipped up to the ceiling, and if it stood on the ceiling, uh, management got to keep it. <laughs> that, that rarely happens. Pretty yeah, smart man. Right. And so young. Look how young they were. They had to be in their yeah. 20s, right? Right, in 1894 when they start this struggling little paper, the Denver Post. And how successful they were at such a young age. And uh, how did the Denver Post become the most spectacular, but also the most profitable newspaper? Well, they ran these great big screaming red ink headlines with headlines like, Does it hurt to be born? <laughs> I can't remember, can you? <laughs> no, I can't remember either. But the Post would tell you whether it hurt to be born or not. It was kind of like today's Twitter or Facebook, right? right. And here is the Post uh, on Champa Street, that great building. They always had human spiders climbing the walls, Bonfils out throwing silver dollars to the crowd below. They had the first ticker tape on there for the World Series. So it really was kind of like a circus act <laughs> yeah, to keep people's well attention, said. right? Yeah. Tell me about your book here. How did it come to be? Well, uh, this uh, woman, Helen Peterson, had done nearly all the work. For, for 50 years worked on it, then she dies, oh. and some of us took it on to just finish it. Well, her dying wish was to see this. She knew many of these editors, had talked to them, had great little stories about tiny little papers like this watch. I'm present. so happy you finished it. I really am. You and a few others took on the feet and did it, and that's wonderful. Thank you for coming on and giving us a sneak peek. Another book you're going to have to pick up about this guy. Pick up Dr. Colorado's wonderful look back at all of Colorado's colorful newspapers at the Colorado Press Association or at tattered cover bookstores. And of course, as always, you can follow all of the happenings of the good doctor at dr-colorado.com. He's a great guy.